Hi everyone! Today I wanted to tackle a question that I get so, so often, which is, should you do a research year before you apply for a dermatology residency position? I'm going to start off by saying that this is a controversial topic, and what I'm going to do for the sake of this video is to break it up into the pros, the cons, and then talk about what my advice might be, and realize that this is really a very personal decision. Every single applicant has a very different application. Everyone has a very different life story. Everyone has done a different amount of research. Everyone has had different grades. Those are all factors that dermatology admissions committees will look at. So let's first think about the cons of a dermatology research year. The most obvious con is that you're not graduating with your class, you're taking an extra year before you apply, so it just delays your time before starting a dermatology residency. Obviously, there are a lot of emotional and personal issues with not graduating with your class, but just coming at it from a financial perspective. Don't forget the fact that this is a very costly endeavor. That extra year before you apply for residency means that not only are you going to have to pay for a place to live, food every single day, uh, living expenses like public transit or car or gas, whatever it might be. But on top of that, depending on the institution or the school that you go to, there's a variable policy in whether you have to pay tuition during that year. Some PIs will actually pay you a stipend for that year. There are tons of students out there who take an unpaid research year. This is my personal opinion, but I've always felt very uncomfortable taking a student on for a research year that's unpaid. I just feel like that's taking advantage of you as a student, and so I've always turned those down. Now that said, unpaid research years do exist out there, and everyone has their own reasons for potentially taking one, uh, but that's just my opinion. So the con not only is the cost to you in that actual year, but don't forget about the opportunity cost as well. By opportunity cost, what I mean is that you will become a dermatology attending one year later than when you originally would have become an attending. So that is one year's worth of an attending salary that you will be delaying by a year. And so that is a substantial amount of money. The other thing, obviously, is that if you're not interested in research, it's also just a terrible way to spend a year. And in terms of what it might get you, sure, it might help your application a Long, but are you really gonna enjoy that entire year, especially if you feel like it's just not your cup of tea? The other con that you have to think about when you take a research year is that you have to be productive during that year. If you take a research year but you end up not publishing much, it can actually be a red flag on your application. So you wanna make sure that you're actually hooking in with a mentor that is going to support you and is actually going to give you enough opportunity to publish. Let's move on to the pros. What are the pros for taking a research year? Well, the first one is, of course, if you're interested in research, then this is a great way to spend a year. If you're interested in exploring whether a research career in dermatology is something that you might want to do in the future as part of your career, this is a great way to actually experiment with that, actually to see what an 80% research, 20% clinical lifestyle might look like. If there's some topic in dermatology that you really want to delve into, this is a great way to get some mentored research experience. I've had a couple students for research years in the last couple of years, and I will say that I've had so much fun getting to teach them statistics, how to come up with a research question, and how to navigate publishing in the medical literature. I would hope that my research students have had a really good experience. The other pro to a research year to remember is that you're gonna spend an entire year with one mentor, generally. And that one faculty member is going to hopefully be in your court when you apply for residency. What I mean by that is that you're going to develop this relationship. That mentor is going to see the good, the bad, the ugly of you as a student during that research year. So that means that if you really kill it during your research year, which is great, then they're probably going to be more likely to get on the phone to advocate for you, especially if you're not getting the interviews that you wanted, or maybe to put in a good word for you. Now, just a reminder, that doesn't mean that if you don't take a research year, that doesn't exist. It just means that with that research year, what you're really getting, in addition to the research experience, is you're getting a longitudinal relationship with a faculty member. The other pro to the research year is that you get to explore a subspecialty area of dermatology for an entire year. Often your dermatology clerkship is going to cover the entire expanse of the field of dermatology. You don't really get to zero in on one little area in the field like many attendings get to do. And so this is your chance to do that and to really focus in. So for example, my research mentees have always really focused in on the space where cancer meets dermatology or supportive oncodermatology. And so this has always been a self-identified area of interest for them, which is why we ended up pairing up for the research years in the past. The other pro, of course, is that life happens in medical school and a research year is a great way to just 
hit pause during your med school training so that you can do other stuff with your life. So for example, I did an MPH year during my medical school years and my then girlfriend did a research year at the time. And it was during that year that we finally got to live together. And then I, that was actually the year where I proposed and we actually planned a wedding together. That's a lie. <laughs> she planned the wedding and I planned the honeymoon. But the point is that that year is what gave us a chance to basically grow as people as opposed to as medical students. And finally, the other pro to a research year is that, especially for those of you who are coming from an institution that doesn't have a dermatology program, a research year is a great way to get out past your institution's walls and to spend a year somewhere else so that you get to know faculty at a different institution and then definitely become a known quantity to that institution. So that when you do apply, you're getting letters from your home institution as well as another institution elsewhere. So those are just some very brief pros and cons to the research year, and I'm sure there's a ton more out there that I'm not thinking about, but let's talk now about advice. So I usually like to split up my advice into if I'm wearing the idealist hat versus the realist hat. What I mean by that is that as an idealist, what I always tell my students is that no, you do not need to take a research year. Taking a research year does not make you a better dermatologist in the long run. It just makes you a better applicant. And maybe you're already an amazing applicant and you don't need to take that research year to really boost your chances anywhere. Really what I tell students is that it's a big commitment. It's a big cost to take both time and money wise. And so you definitely do not need to take a research year. If you pull program directors in dermatology across the country, most of us would agree that the research year has gotten out of hand. That dermatology applicants now feel like a research year is required, which I definitely disagree with. I think that the research year should really only be used by the select few students who truly are exploring that part of dermatology for their own sake. That's the idealist answer. Now for the realist answer. Realistically speaking, the research year does make you a more attractive candidate on paper. Certainly you're gonna have more publications. You're gonna have a mentor who's gonna write you most likely a glowing letter of recommendation. And so when you apply, you're already gonna have those two elements that are going to be better after a research year than if you had applied without a research year. However, I'm not sure that it's worth everyone's effort to do that research year for the sake of those pros. The other thing that we often say is that the research year will decrease the variance in the quality of program that you go to. This is really an idea that I stole from my colleague Arash Mostagimi, and I really like the way that he describes it. If you apply without a research year and you're already a great applicant, there's certainly a chance that you'll get into one of the best programs in the country. Now that said, I'm just gonna hit pause for a second and say that all dermatology programs are amazing. The only difference is that different programs have different strengths. Some programs have much more of a research bend. Some programs are much stronger in procedural dermatology. Some programs, just because of geographically where they're located, sees a lot more skin of color. So you just have to think about those things when it comes to a program. But without a research year, if you're a great applicant, you still have a really good chance of matching at a top program. To that particular applicant, what I usually say is if you did do a research year, we're decreasing the variance and the chances of you going to a top program increase. There's no guarantee that you'll end up at one of the top programs, it's just that the chances of you ending up at one of the top programs goes up. Like everything else in admissions, for med school, for residency, whatever it might be, there's no guarantee anywhere. It's just that we're trying to change the likelihood and odds of matching into a top program by all these little tweaks that we have. The research year is just something that you can truly control, especially after you get your board score and your grades, and then you can make a determination of whether it's something that's both important to you and important to your application to pursue. In my mind, the research year is ideal for those students who maybe are not as strong on paper and really want to improve their credentials, or perhaps for students who are really pursuing an academic career in dermatology, and for that reason want to go to a program that might gear them toward a career in academics a little bit more. One more tip for all of you considering a research year. Do not underestimate the value that you bring to the table when you're meeting with your potential mentors. Remember that this has to be a match, meaning that you have to be as excited about the relationship as they are, and you are interviewing them just as much as they are interviewing you. My own research mentees have truly improved and accelerated my own career, and I am so thankful for the time that I've had to mentor them in the last couple of years. Make sure that you find someone who's going to value that relationship just as much as you will.
Again, these are just my ideas when it comes to a dermatology research year, and I'm sure if you ask different faculty across the country, you get different answers. So hopefully that's a helpful way to think about it. It's still a very personal decision. If you're trying to decide on a dermatology research year, definitely reach out to your mentors at your own institution, because I promise this is something that they've already helped other students before you think through in the past. As always, I hope this video was helpful for you. If so, please hit the like button below. And if you find all this information to be helpful for you as you progress your medical career, then consider hitting the subscribe button as well. Thanks so much for joining me today to talk about a dermatology research year. Until next time, see you later.